Hello, so in this chat I'm going to talk about really sort of giving an overview of where all my stuff comes from. So if I was going to make a new level, where would I look to to get all the things that I'd want to go in it? So my philosophy for this stuff is that I'm making add-on maps, so don't have to be AAA quality and they have to be above all very small, so uh, avoiding huge big textures and uh, things like that. So um, the approach I use is a mishmash of different things. I've gone over this sort of stuff before but here's a sort of summary of where it all comes from. So in the level, uh, in this case because it's a sort of medieval town, um, it doesn't really lend itself to a modular system. So each block is a single mesh um, that's also for reasons of performance, um, but I'm definitely doing it the hard way. Uh, so yeah, it's not ideal. Um, but also there is some space saving, there are some space saving aspects to it. So if I go to an unfinished bit of the level, da, 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 da. so these are sort of the first things I, I did to sort of test out some of the textures. These are sort of modular houses. They can be stuck together, but um, Basically, each of these houses has a lot of surfaces that aren't being used. So if I go in here, this wall is not visible. Um, the back wall may not be visible. Um, that's a lot of light map area that's not being used. So it's not using space very efficiently. Whereas if I'm doing a block, the block is... Uh, well, here's one I prepared earlier. So this is one of my uh, meshes. And if I go inside it... Oh, I need to do a bit of tidy up there. But basically there's no, well, sorry, there are very few hidden surfaces that are, that have got a light map presence. So the light map is about as efficient as I can make it. Um, so that's part of the, part of the approach. Uh, and so I've got a small number of big chunky blocks of various kinds. Uh, it's taken me an awfully long time to do this. I don't recommend it. Um, basically stick to modern towns and villages or countryside and you'll see that most maps in circulation do that whether for that reason or not I don't know uh, but urban maps take a lot of time and are quite difficult and to make it realistic realistic ish uh, it takes a lot of time to make sort of custom meshes like that anyway so I make those meshes from scratch what else have I got I've got quite a few props um, and by and large I make them myself but I do have some marketplace stuff I've bought in uh, I'm trying to think of an example. Um, I can't immediately think of an example, but oh, here we are. So this is a marketplace asset from uh, I think it's uh, Urban Trash, maybe. Um, and they've got dumpsters and bins. Uh, so here's another thing from that same pack. Um, better quality than I usually make, uh, and that's fine. Um, <coughs> And some stuff I've got off uh, non-epic sites, so generic 3D modelling sites. So my vehicles come off Turbo Squid, uh, which has a range of stuff. Uh, usually stuff is really very too high quality, um, hundreds of thousands of polygons, which is not good for my purposes. I want really low poly cars because I want to use a lot of them. I don't want to be limited. I'd rather have 10 dodgy cars than one superb car and a lot of empty space. Um, and for the Turbo Squid stuff, I have to do a little bit, little bit more work to get it in. Sometimes I need to tweak the materials. I um, have to obviously make the materials from scratch. So to uh, you, you will get a diffuse map typically, but not necessarily roughness and specularity and the normal map. Um, well, sometimes normal map. So I have to do a bit of work under the hood, as it were. Um, and I've also modded some of those models whoop, um, so as to add number plates in this case and to add consistent number plates um, which can be swapped out for other ones from a library of plates. Ta da! Um, I now need to oh, uh, just undo that while I can. Right. Um, and other meshes are things that I make myself. Um, so the little bollards, the fences, which are in this case quite specific to this town, um, that's part of the mesh, but the road names, the lamps, uh, all these things I make myself, so it takes a little bit more time. 
and they're not super high quality because I don't have time to make super high quality things nor possibly the ability. That's another prop I made. Um, I'll come back to the materials and lastly there will be hopefully some assets from the game this is going to go into which in this case is ground branch. It's what I'm making my levels for at the moment. That's a game still in development. Um, the game is well off the ground. It's it's fully functional. It's a great game, but it's not yet uh, got the facility to to accept third-party stuff. And the way they're going to do it is the epic way uh, in terms of the company. Not saying it's necessarily a good way, which is to um, create essentially a copy of the Unreal Editor with all the ground branch stuff built into it. Essentially. So once I get to play around with that, I will probably add some extra things like breakable glass and uh, and proper doors, although not in this map as there aren't any that open. Um, uh, yeah, um, so that's where I'm going to get all the stuff from. So I spent a bit of money getting some things that I really need that I can't be bothered to do or that are beyond my ability to do properly. I wouldn't be able to do. I mean I could bodge up one of those but it wouldn't look as nice as that. Um, so materials I mean, these things come with their own materials. Uh, a point to bear in mind is that the marketplace stuff, uh, and some there are some materials on the marketplace that are just materials that don't have attached that aren't attached to objects. So, when you get props off the marketplace, you tend to get them skinned with custom uh, custom textures and stuff. So, uh, let's just find the actual. Where am I going? Um, I'm now confusing myself completely. Um, okay, so that is a skin for the dumpster. That is just a one-use, one-off uh, texture, and it's actually a 4K texture. So what I'd say is be very wary of anything you buy in the marketplace, as it's quite high-quality stuff. But that means that you get massively too much uh, in terms of size. So as an add-on map, I can't afford to be bundling in 4K textures, at least not more than a couple. So, for my stuff, I need to downgrade the texture. So I've downgraded this, I think, by one to a 2K texture, possibly even more. Um, and you can do that project-wide by setting the LOD bias. Um, so zero is default. One will divide the quality by two. Two will divide it by four. Three will divide by eight, so it goes from a 4K to a 2K to a 1K to a 512 by 512, and so on. 1K is usually fine. I mean, the amount it adds is not so significant. 2K is a judgment call, um, and you can also reduce the quality of some of the maps it uses, like your roughness map, and that can be reduced more than the diffuse or the normal. You can play around with that. Um, so yeah, the simple fix is to go into the assets of these third-party marketplace things and change the LOD bias on the textures. What I want to do, in fact what I've done here, that was I've made a copy of it. Um, so I've made a special low-res copy of the, the props, the meshes, and I found all the materials that they use. I've made a copy of those materials. I found all the textures that the materials use and made a copy of those. And so I've got a whole copy of all these things just isolated so that if I want to go to use the full size one they're all there still and and they're 4k textures so I don't know at this stage that I want to have everything using that low quality um, I guess other things will be in different projects but for me I tend to stick everything in the same project so I, I'm just keeping a copy of things this is not efficient but that's how I keep a handle on what's going in my maps um, so I've now uh, yeah so when this is packaged up it will use whatever resolution is appropriate given the LOD bias. Um, that's another uh, Turbo Squid car. They're slightly inconsistent, um, but again I've put in a consistent number plate on all of them. Uh, digress. So um, there's marketplace materials. So the props have their own skins, but the marketplace stuff tends to be more generic uh, textures like wall textures, brick textures, roof textures. I think the roofs in my map are a marketplace texture. Though I think actually this came from a third party website for free textures. Um, and it's quite good for that. It's got a. Oh no, no, I think that is a marketplace. But you can also get various websites which have typically 1K, maybe even 2K textures you can use. This uh, is another kind of material which is a sort of generic material I've made from a photograph. So I have taken one of my photographs 
um, done various things I can show you probably in other videos to make it seamless so that it repeats um, and in this one I've also made a height map by hand uh, so that it generates the normal map from the height map but also allows blending so I think in part 6 I showed you how I blended in this sort of leafy texture with that same wall and it's using the blend of the height maps to do so so it fills in the gaps so that gave a nice visual effect but also having done that work I can just plug it straight into a uh, the normal from height map function to automatically generate the, the normal so you get a nice ish you know realistic um, thing there the there's another way to do things which is to use something like crazy bump to take a uh, the diffuse picture, the diffuse texture I want to use, which I've taken from a photograph here for my blinds, and it automatically works out a normal map, and you can see um, what it's done there. It's slightly smoothed, but you can tweak all these things, put in fine detail, take off the large detail I typically do, um, and then you can change how much it recognises the shape. And actually, for some things, actually just having no shape recognition gives you the nicest normal map. Um, it works quite well for certain kinds of things, not so well for other kinds of things. Um, things which are very specular tend to fool it. This is its height map, which is basically spot on. Um, you can tweak that to get different results. That's not a good result, but near there you can get better. Um, so that's a slightly more even height map, but you know, these are things you can tweak. It'll generate occlusion maps, whatever. So these are things you can bring back into Unreal based on a single diffuse texture to give it a bit more life. Um, but in this case, I think I started with the displacement map that this made and then hand painted on the blobs corresponding to the raised bits of stone. That took a long time, but the result was worth it. But I won't do that for everything because it's very time consuming. Um, I've also done my own materials for my own props. Um, but they tend to be more generic materials that I've, I've applied to certain polygons rather than skinning things up. So to find an example if I can... Um, so the lamps I've used a... Oh, I've also used a lot of the epic starter materials. I don't know if I'm supposed to but I have. So that's um, a bronze texture. I think this is one of my materials which uses similar techniques to use a sort of um, noise texture to give a bit of detail. That is a strangely untextured sort of black paint with rust showing through which uh, works better on things like that. All this needs a bit of work. Um, and another thing I do a lot of is to use photos for textures. So this door is just captured from a photo, uh, resized, whatever, um, tidied up uh, but uh, I don't use very high resolution particularly, so a lot of these things are 512 by 512 or less, and that's not a significant amount of uh, memory taken up, though it does all add up over time. Um, the shutters are from photos, so that's sort of easy stuff from photos. Less easy was uh, this texture here, which I had to make seamless. Um, that is a marketplace material. Uh, and so on and so forth. And this is a stock Unreal asset for the sky, which is why it looks so good. This is taken from a photograph, very easy, very low res, but it adds a lot of sort of realism uh, and character to a map, though it does also introduce some legal problems. Um, I'm not selling my maps, so I'm largely ignoring them, but if I was to do a commercial map, I would have to reconsider that approach and probably make up my own copy of it with different words in it. Um, and uh, yeah, so skin stuff. Um, I'm trying to think of a good example. Um, like that dumpster texture, um, that's the kind of thing you do in something like Substance Painter. And I think uh, uh, if I just go over here, these things here, um, I've made that texture uh, outside the editor. But this shoe, the simple shoe, is something I had to go at skinning in. Um, not Substance Painter, but something like Substance Painter, Substance Painter, um, where you define your 3D shape, you make a sort of light map for it, which has every polygon is uniquely 
uh, located and maybe easier to show than to explain and uh, then you fill it in by sort of spray painting it in a, in a program so things which are skinned like that have you can have nice sort of edge effects that are done in the program special smart materials um, so it's more of a test but it you usually get very nice results but it's quite time and memory consuming um, so the UVs you just there's just you know every polygon has a unique place in the UV map in the one by one thing so it just maps onto the texture which is here I'll turn the alpha off and so that sort of maps onto the, the texture but actually most of my props I make a different way which is to map on the photo so I basically create the uh, texture first and then apply it to the model so often I'm using very close to the source material uh, then I've used an alpha channel for some emissive effects but I basically um, assembled this in Photoshop in a sort of rectilinear fashion and it's not perfect and then gone into uh, Lightwave so this is another prop where I've got a picture of a utility panel cover and um, just sort of mapped it onto the, the shape quite crudely but you get some details which are just photos but I think I may have done a crazy bump thing with this as well to add a bit of detail uh, there we go um, uh, okay so basically I've got lots of different places I get textures from most of the stuff I do is taking a photo processing it into a sort of rectilinear format and then applying it to a model whether it's a building or otherwise and actually another class of materials I use is decals and I'm beginning to sort of finalize my workflow on this stuff rather than making unique textures for lots of things um, I'm trying to now use sort of generic materials one particular class of thing I'm now doing is things which can be vertex painted to give them colors um, so this is my more recent work so I may put on some more decals here but all of these blinds are using a generic material which I'll quickly show you if I can find it which is a derived from another one so this is a an orange fabric I used um, I've desaturated it to provide that finish so I'm really just using the black at the um, the values rather than the colors and then I'm taking the vertex color and multiplying that with that um, the random detail just gives it uh, a sort of macro texture so you can't see the um, the repeating textures so simply a case of choose your color um, select the object and paint it on so that allows me to use one texture one material for all of these awnings and to have them come out a different color so I'm doing this a lot more to be more efficient with my material use but the effect isn't quite as nice as having uh, you know dedicated materials but you can also do a little bit of varying things but you know it's a better effect the more points you have uh, the more polygons you have but there's a trade-off between doing that and uh, having an efficient model to draw so I think we're back to normal um, but I'm now using that technique more you can use it for other things too you can use it to um, apply certain finishes so rather than applying colors use the vertex color to determine how much you mask in a thing so my ivy covered walls uses um, vertex painting I've got one up here somewhere um, so you can paint in that that foliage using um, vertex painting and I can't remember which way around it goes oh that's removing it or I can apply it with black so that's quite a nice technique to give it a more sort of organic flow and you can get a more uh, nuanced effect by just dividing up the uh, polygons a bit more and I don't know how far back I need to go you get uh, right so I haven't cocked something up um, so that is I think where I get everything and I just wanted to quickly look at one other thing which is uh, to get an efficiency um, 
not going into the whole how it works, but instance meshes. Um, a lot of my stuff I sort of prototype with splines. Um, I'm not going to go into spline curves, there's lots of tutorials on them, lots of examples. Just Google Unreal spline curve. Um, I've done my own versions to do things like uh, first and last meshes. So when I've done fences there's sort of an end to each fence. That's just a variation on the basic principle. Uh, and there's some problems with my setup so I don't um, I don't, I'm not publicising it further, but I've got a few things to sort of, um, basically it's, it, it just works. Um, but what this does is to create, so each of these balls is a mesh which is, it's got a space in it. Um, so you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 different uh, meshes created by that, and there's some more here. And you can see that if you're doing something like these fences over a long distance, you get a lot of different meshes. Now, there's two ways to to um, make that more efficient. One is to just take that and merge actors, and you get this window, and it'll create a single mesh with all these included in it. That's generally the best approach for these things, I think. For example, this painted line was a spline. Well, maybe there's still a spline curve, um, but this I can turn into a single mesh um, for great greater efficiencies because that's just a repeating element. So that's a nice way to get an efficient curved mesh without too much work. And uh, yeah, and this is, here's what I've done already. So what I'm doing instead for the balls is to replace them um, with instance meshes. So my workflow is simple if tedious. I'll just give an example. Um, so let's find the marble balls. That's the one with the space, but I want the one without the space. And basically what I do is drag it on, line it up in more or less the same place, then delete. When I've done all that, I delete the spline curve, leaving the ones I've just posted, and then I will select them all and turn them into an instance mesh. I might fast forward to that to show you how that works with this tool, which is on the marketplace. They charge a bit for it, but it's well worth it. Um, this allows you lots of things to turn things into instance meshes and turn them back from instance meshes. Um, and once I've done that, and I'm probably going to do it in this case just for this area, to have one instance mesh in this area so it doesn't draw too often. Um, so that'll be one draw call for the whole lot rather than 16, 18 draw calls, whatever it is. Um, so it's a slight efficiency. But there's, um, on a more industrial scale, I've got a lot of these things around, which are sort of utility panels. Um, gas, electric, whatever. Here's another one. And I'm just popping them on for a bit of breaking up the, the walls, giving a bit of character, a bit of visual interest where it needs it. And also, you know, that's kind of... Um, uh, that's how it is in real life. Just I'm trying to make a few areas, token a few areas look like they are. Stare around all the place. Um, if you look in here, the outliner, I've got C is one type, B is another type, and the main type there, I've got 22 of them or so. And the easiest way to, to turn that into instance meshes, just select them in there. I mean, I can individually select them, and they're all over the place. But if I go to the outliner, um, and I make sure they are all the same thing, and they are because they're all showing the same static mesh. I go to my instance mesh thing, Bob, and I go somewhere, convert to instances, and it's replaced them in this case with this HISMA thing, which stands for HISMA uh, instance mesh actor, something hierarchical, I don't know. But if you see this blob and the HISMA, um, that is basically a single actor which encapsulates all of those individual meshes. And I finished half the map, but I'm still doing it now so that I'm going to have two sets of instance meshes, sorry, two instance meshes for those things, one on either side of the map, and that should slightly reduce the amount of times that uh, they're drawn. Because if you draw one, you draw them all. Um, so let's put them there. And what's happened to the original ones? Um, they are still there, do not panic somewhere. So it's created a subfolder 
source actors you'll see sometimes it puts the actual name of the actors and um, they're all there but it's turned them off they're invisible so if you want to undo it you can either undo it with the instance mesh tool or you can just delete the instance mesh go to all of these and set them to be visible so you can select them all and select visible that kind of thing but that has now at a stroke uh, made my level a bit quicker doesn't make it quicker in all cases um, if the meshes that you're doing it to are very high poly meshes you can actually make it go slower because it's I say it's drawing all of the polys at once but normally things are slow because of draw calls rather than slow because of too many polys but it, it it's a class by it's a case by case basis but there that's the one that's been replaced the lighting's all wrong because it's just been replaced um, yeah so but this in this case um, I'm fairly confident that's going to be fine because uh, it has uh, like 600 polys, 600 vertices. It's it's relatively low poly. Um, if you're far enough away and it's got lots, um, if it goes to one of the lower lots for one, it'll go for all. If you're close enough to get the base lot, it'll show the base lot for all of them. So you can get slightly inconsistent frame rates if you're close to um, an instance mesh that has a lot of instances. Um, but generally, that kind of small stuff is very well suited to it. Um, the lamps I've done they are an instance mesh. Uh, if I go to the normal selection it shows them all. So you can just about see all over the map there's there's lamps there. So I've done some optimizing already. It's been fairly painless. Um, I'm doing it on a half the map basis because uh, it's still a good efficiency and there's something to be said for not making it draw all over the map all the time. Um, yeah, so I've managed to get my frame rates right back up again. Now I've done about half the map. So that's a bit of a jumble, ramble, whatever, uh, but I hope that was of interest and hopefully of use. Goodbye.